This is Twit. Why don't we start with Google Glass? Because there's not a whole lot to this story other than Wait, the what? fact <laughs> that at Google I.O., if you remember, if you recall Google I.O., uh, they were talking, Google was talking about kind of the next iteration of AR glasses that Google is working on going to put out at some point. I feel like when Google, you know, when Google I was, was happening and they were showing off the glasses, I felt like this was like maybe a couple of years out, but apparently they're going to start beta testing these suckers. I think next month, starting in August, you might encounter someone wearing the new iteration of uh, I have Google's a proposal. Air glasses. Yes. I want to be able to trade in my Google glass on this. I think I have right. <laughs> that would be nice. I would do that. Yes. Yes. In a heartbeat. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, Although, those $1,500 glasses. I know. It's probably going to cost you more to send it to them versus what those things are actually worth. Yeah, I know. They're not worth that $1,500. Rub, Rub it in. <laughs> Rub it in, man. Rub it in. I bought the lenses for them. I bought real oh, lenses boy. for them so I could wear them all the time. I'm that much of a schmuck. Am I going <laughs> to buy these? <laughs> probably because I'm a schmuck. Bless no, your it's, you're not a schmuck. You just, you go all in. You dedicate yourself to the bit. That's what it's all for the about. the show. I do it for the yeah. show. You're dedicated to the bit. You're right. <laughs> and Kevin, Kevin did the same thing. So, you know, you're in good company, Jeff. I am. Yeah. He's there with you. <laughs> so, but these, I mean, so, so y'all, these are, these are not going to be tested broadly. It's just like some of their employees no. and these glasses are different. They've got, they're for AR, understanding, like, the environment around you they can take they can't take pictures and video except algorithmically so so basically oh. they're pulling in data but it's not data that you can like post on instagram or something like that um, and they will have a red light for when they're collecting that information Oh, I don't know why I had it in my head that there was no camera on here, but that makes sense if it's an AR, you know, glass that it would have some yeah. sort of camera. It's just you that can't use it to take pictures. It's like LiDAR, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, it's, it's not LiDAR, but it's right, like time right. of flight. Yeah. Image sensing. I don't, yeah, I have a hard time under, like we need a new word for taking imagery for computers and not for people's vision. <laughs> Right. But but uh, is this basically a play for Google to take this particular product or proposed product out of the regular consumer's hand and just saying, you know what, we're really focusing more so on enterprise and manufacturing? Do you see some type of um, fun consumer product coming out of this? Um, you know, with all of the Pokemon stuff that, that people still play. Um, I even heard somebody still plays Ingress. You know, and that's ARs, Ooh, AR game. That's a blast from the past. Well, the last game I played was missed, so. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> wow. Good job. Congratulations. <laughs> um, it's about time. I, I don't know if, I mean, yeah. so what's from a consumer question, perspective, man? Google is talking about things like translation. Uh, what else did they talk about? I'm trying to remember what all they said, but. Uh, that's the main thing that I remember is translation. Probably, probably uh, directions and that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah right. Now, I think given how Google historically, like you do actually need some sort of image sensing if you want to do like, you know how Google has their AR directions now? I don't know if you've played with their mm -hmm. directions. Yes. Where you, mm -hmm. it, and it'll put that up. So I'm envisioning something, being able to do something like this on a heads up display would actually be really good. Um, so you would need to get some sort of image data from it because for that. For translation, as someone who just spent time in a foreign country trying to read menus using my phone, you know, having, a, again, a heads-up display that shows they can see the world. Oh, uh, yeah. That sounds so nice. Instead of sitting there pointing I, at it with your phone yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah which, I get it. which was fine. It but, worked, I'm know, sure, right? It's fine, but this would be truly transformative, right? Like if you were already wearing glasses anyway, anyways, it would it would be less of a, I need to pull out my phone in order to do this thing and more, this is just a new superpower that I have when I wear these things. It just automatically happens. That's that's like, that's, that's, that's awesome. a good way to put it, I think. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I think, I think it's a really interesting question there because, because they learned the lesson with glass that if you give it to just everyday ordinary schmucks like me, we're going to end up <laughs> making fun of it and it's not really going to work. So they, they, they realized that the real use of it was 
for tradespeople and doctors and so on and so forth. So I think I think if they learn that lesson, you never know with Google, but it would it would it would say to me that their reflex should be to start with those kinds of uses and prove it. Mr. Jarvis, as someone that has their own theme song, you're not an everyday person, my man. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I wasn't. Definitely not a schmuck. You are not a schmuck. That uh, the use cases, I think consumers would want this if they had the right kind of gear. And I, so I think they found the use cases in enterprise because a they were expensive, but b because they weren't comfortable to wear so you had to have like mm-hmm. a really good incentive and your employer you really saying hey this it. is yeah, okay yeah um okay. so i think like and we're seeing like if you think about snap spectacles you think about the the ray-ban sunglasses amazon made the echo frames um they weren't that great um but you see that we're trying to like it's very clear that we're trying to figure out how to cram as much tech into a truly wearable device yeah and we're still not sure what the use case is to drive like people to actually purchase it. So stay on that, so Stacey, for a second. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, so I think that's Google's attempt to throw something out there, start playing around with it and see what that, I hate to say a killer app, but at least a, a viable app for a glass might be. Mm. So, so with the old glass, um, I don't think it was anticipated that taking photos was going to be a primary use, uh, you know, Robert Scoble in the shower and all that. And, yeah. and, and I think that what Google wished for was the heads up display, giving you information because it's an information company. So what's interesting in this case, if they disable photo taking for any purpose other than data and, and knowing where it is and, and that kind of stuff and being able to pre- present a, a, an augmented reality, um, the, the design decisions will drive the usage is I guess what I'm trying to say. Yes, and, and we're we so much, yeah. And we're also so much further in terms of what these are capable of. Now we have, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I can't remember, it was Glass back in like 2013? Yeah, I mean, it was it was almost, ten, it was 10 years ago, uh, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Yeah, so now we Glass have was 10 years ago. real-time translate, right? We have always on wake word detection that can actually like play back music or do like we have so much more available to us that isn't taking pictures that still feels both useful and a little bit familiar. So I, I do think you're right, Jeff, that that we we have these things available to us now that and that'll be kind of exciting. So what do you think the the killer app should be, could be? What would you if, with this capability, with this superpower, what would you most want to be able to do with it? My issue is I need it to be almost as good as my current glasses and like mm-hmm. not maybe not as stylish because these are my most stylish pair of glasses. They are very but, stylish. Uh, <laughs> rocking it. Very rocking stylish. it. <laughs> but have it like, I feel like music playback that's compelling is good, right? I feel Ooh. like when I'm walking around a city having directions, like you have to think like translate sounds awesome, but how often am I in how a often? foreign country, right? Right. 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 Yeah. So like, yep. what are the well, could everyday you, you in Paris? Could you, could uh, yeah, you have like, imagined? Using oh my it there? God, I would have loved it. I would have okay. loved it, but it wouldn't have been something I would have purchased for right, that. Like for that. That's mm-hmm. like a yeah. So I'm like, what is my like almost everyday use case where this becomes compelling? Maybe it's playing an AR game and that gets us like a lot, like gets us penetration. I think directions is really interesting. Yeah. I actually don't think notifications is a good one simply because like I don't want to be reading while I'm trying to drive, right? Does that make mm, sense? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't know that everybody is still kind of pining to get that notification triage, you know, uh, always, you know, always being completely up to date on those notifications that come in. We, I feel like we've kind of shifted a little bit. I know I have away from mm-hmm. let me know every single little thing that happens as it happens, you know, immediately on my phone, but in front of my face. Like, that's too noisy for me. The thing yep. that I do every day that I could see this being useful for would be the navigation, even though the, the navigation that I use right now is is handy already, but that's like an immediate, like when I think of translation, you're right. I'm rarely ever in a situation where translation is necessary. So that's not going to be the killer app for, for someone to get this in my view, but I navigate all the time. So that would be very helpful, but, but you don't navigate if you're driving a killer app. I don't know. 
But you're navigating well, on the big also, screen, right? Yeah, but like, like I'm just thinking about like how my Tesla handles, they have two forms of navigation. On the big screen, I have like the traditional map that you're probably used to, right? Mm-hmm. But then in front of me on the little dash in front of me, I get like, like basically like just a little turn left here kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. So I think those are what you would see on the glass. You wouldn't right. see the map style. Um, and then as a woman, like I never take out my phone when I'm walking places, right? Because I, I don't want someone to come and whack me over the Situational head. Situational awareness. Like yeah, mm-hmm. I got to be aware. So I'm thinking about like, there's also like, I, I really think things like music playback might be good or the ability to start a voice call could be compelling. Mm-hmm. Um, emergency, like I would love to have like, hey, G, call 911, you know, and, yeah. and yeah. share location or something like that could be useful. Um, so I'm just trying to think of like places where I, I have my screen. And then also, what if you could see things like, I don't know, like, you know how you Google a restaurant and it says like, oh, I'm super busy or I'm I'm not super busy right now. What if you could just like, as you're walking by a place, see like, Oh, holy cow, that's crowded. I mean, now there, maybe you can see it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, the annotated ding, 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 world, yeah. that starts to make a lot more sense to me, Stacey. That makes a lot more sense. That, that yeah. is context. Um, yep. By the way, it also makes me, make me, listening to you guys, makes me think it should be disabled when you drive. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sure you, you should have a driving mode. Right? Looking, plenty of tools. Or driving mode it. that's simplified. There only gives you what you actually need for that very specific your task. Your focus yeah. comes yeah. off the distance and onto the, the lens, doesn't it? It might, That's like, have you used dangerous. the AR navigation? Yeah. The Google AR navigation, like yes. while you're yeah. walking, walking, where you take a picture well of the world? For me. It's always confused. Yeah, well, I'm always going like this. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Do the figure eight <laughs> thing. You yeah. got to calibrate yeah, yeah. it first, yeah. man. Yeah, I yeah. look yeah. like an idiot on the street. Oh, no, no. So <laughs> totally. instead of, so has has it asked you, because Google will ask you instead of calibrating, it's like, hey, hold up your camera and let us see where you are. Have you done that yet, Jeff? Yes, Yes. it works for three steps and then it gets confused again. I I haven't done this in quite a while, in fairness, but it was so, Uh, so so bad. You and your electromagnetic blood. (laughs) Your magnetic blood. When you enter (laughs) into that mode, it does an overlay on top of the real world. So I could see something like that being enabled in driving mode. I mean, it's not there yet, but that I feel like could be where it's going. You can see that on your windshield. Yeah, that'd be cool. Okay, no, we can't bring a car in. That's a whole other system of like manufacturers oh. and like API calls and like design. And then I'd have to have a Google car versus an app. No, no, Jeff. Which of course is what I would do. I would get a Google car. <laughs> I'm not getting an Apple car. Uh-uh. Being able to Damn. throw on a pair of glasses and immediately go outside and get this new contextual awareness of the world around you talking about superpowers like that right there is is the killer app as far as i'm concerned based on what we're all the different you know uh, possibilities that we're talking about here if i knew that when i threw these glasses on and i went for a walk downtown i was going to immediately understand oh that place has has um a really great sale going on right now maybe i should go in there and check it out or that place is as dead you know that that awesome restaurant is as dead as it ever gets this moment maybe i should go in there and, and get lunch uh you know th- things like that that actually impact your your immediate life a- yeah. and actually beyond that it, it's almost like you get a window into a world that doesn't exist without those glasses right it's well, kind of like that was four square's dream was to do yeah, that right back in the day. yes well you know, now, you know the you killer app that they will never do oh. sorry stacy well won't they do? well i was just going to tell jeff or jeff jay <laughs> Jason, that he will have to still have his phone in his pocket because we don't have the computing power for this yet. But okay, and what is the killer app they'll never do? They'll never do is, who the hell is that? Oh my God. Yeah. They'll totally do that. Yeah, yeah. Don't want those I would I, that privacy for me, implications. I'm terrible at names. Oh, I would love what that. If, what if they did it so like, here's, here's what if they did this. What if I opted into sharing mm-hmm. my mm-hmm. face data with my contacts and then Google's go. like, this is a contact of yours. Would that be okay for you? Um, you could put in your enemies as contacts. I mean, it'd be fine. Danny's okay. Easy, but well, no, right, so. I would have to opt in 
to be like, oh, you would have to as, the, as a subject. Oh, but then, and then yeah. also, opt in is cool. Yeah, and then also, I would probably want some sort of like creep mode in that, where I would be mm-hmm. like, even though they're my contact, I don't want them. So I might have to proactively go in and, and delete, you know. And I could always opt in to or opt out of it completely for everyone. What about if they did it that way? I like yeah, that. some sort of like quick disable or or invisibility mode or something like that. Yeah, I still think like I think invisibility mode like. So Google says in their, they're talking about this, they're not going to share data from sensitive areas like government buildings, hospitals, places like that. I actually think Google has the power to shut that down on the device. They're just saying they won't keep that data, but I actually think Google has the power to create an invisibility mode for people. Um, so yeah. Yeah, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you think these, uh, how is Amazon doing with Echo Frames? I know that they have a second uh, generation, so they didn't totally kill it. And I realize that it's definitely, you know, in comparison with what we're talking about, it's definitely a lot less than, uh, you know, by comparison. But has Amazon been been at all successful with kind of bringing a kind of connected glasses uh, to the market? I, I hear nothing about them, I feel like. I haven't, Kevin hated them. I haven't ever encountered someone in the wild with them. Yeah. But I have encountered people with the Ray-Bans sunglasses that oh, freaking okay. love them. Like I've encountered four people in the wild wearing this, which isn't a lot, but you know, it's more than the Echo. That's Ray-Bans. enough for New York Times trend story. That's that's that's, that's a I, lot. Were they I, I mean like that is who a lot. Who are these people? Um were they people Mostly that would be men. panelists on this show or was it? <laughs> right. you know. Yeah. Where, where <laughs> random airports um, or so at, at a convention? Yeah. Tech conferences. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah. So hard. Right, and yeah. Then no, men it, with money at tech conferences. <laughs> it ain't a lot of people with them then. If that's the case. Yeah. 